Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mark Who 77. This is our 14th show. Well, actually, our 15th show because we had a two-parter. But it's our 14th show. Uh, and on our 14th show, we have to say we're going old school. Yep, there'll be no editing, no hardly any graphics, no music. It's just us doing it live like we're recording on a TV station. This is our news station. Isn't that right, Vicky? Sure. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> hey, Ben Cullis and Vicky Jakubowski. Uh, how you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah. Now, we've got some fun things to talk about on this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be talking about uh, a, a fantastic award. We'll be talking about um, a, a issue, a, a jump on issue. I'm not going to tell you about. We're going to talk about a new 32 page children's and family comic I think you'll be interested in. And we'll be talking about, well, something to do with Diamond Comics, Diamond Publications, Diamond Comics, the uh, lovely mail. Well, what is it? What is Diamond Comics actually, Vicki? I don't know. What is Diamond Comics? It's ben, what is Diamond company. Comics? It's a, it's a distribution, distribution company. company. But we'll talk about it. We're not saying it now. We're just talking about it. And then we'll talk about what to look forward in 2024. But first, Ben, tell us who our guests are. Uh, they're my partners in crime. We've got Dave Healy and Steve Ball from the 77. Oh, wow. We've had them on before, haven't we? You may have seen them before. <laughs> We've had them on the show. Oh, wow. We had that hard question to ask, but they've already answered it. I wonder what we're going to do about that. Well, okay. I think we're going to bring them on. So let's go and uh, welcome Steve and Dave. Hold on just a second. And we'll be here in just a second. So everyone, like we said, let's bring on Steve and Dave. Hey, guys. Hey folks, how are you doing out there? Yeah, um, we're doing pretty good. Um, wanted to know what the weather is like. No, <laughs> this is we live. You can tell us. What the we, always, like. no, we haven't we haven't asked the weather in in a long, long time. So we're not going to do that to you. Um, what have you guys been Why? up to today? Why it's not snowing where you guys are? Oh yeah, is it snowing? <laughs> it's what is it? It's, it's, it's snowing. It was it's yesterday. Snowing. No snow. Here, just cold. Just cold. Blazing <laughs> sunshine where I am. Blazing sunshine. Oh, it's been ah. raining here. It's been raining. Okay, guys, we're done with that. Now, like I said, we're recording. We're this is live. We're not editing. We're not doing anything fantasy. Fan fantasy. Fancy. <laughs> we're keeping going. We're not editing that out. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna start. Um, and of course, we always, guys, we always ask the hardest question first. You know, they get it out of the way. So the rest of the you know questions are easy and they can relax. The question is, oh wait a minute. We can actually forego it because. Both of you have actually answered this question on previous shows, <laughs> haven't you? I mean, you know, oh, the, uh, oh, the hell with it. You know, people may not have watched those episodes. So we're going to ask this question again. Dave Healy, who are you? Okay. I'm a writer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. All right. I try to anyway, when I get a chance. Um, yeah, I work for the 77 part of it and um, all the various spin-offs that go on board. I'm usually involved in some way or other. So, uh, yeah, that's me. Excellent. And of course, who is Steve Bull? Right. For the purpose of this podcast, I am a writer, editor, and um, designer for the 77. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm going to let Ben ask the actual first question. Go ahead, Ben. What are we, we're talking about some kind of award, I think. Well, yeah. Ooh. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing. And um, we're pretty chuffed to have it in fact guys isn't it right this is the second time that we are um the um uk's independent comic of the year or wow. 2020 and 2024 that's how we roll mm. yeah. wow and that's you know nice. you're in good you're in good company uh you know uh, neil gaiman uh won best writer of all time uh sandman became the best comic adaption and best comic of all time 2000 ad was the best uk comic so you're in you're in perfect, wonderful company on this one. We're, we're very considering happy. asking him to write for us, but we're not sure about it yet. We want him to get a little <laughs> bit more experience under his belt. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, it. I, yeah, we're looking for someone with a bit show. of a higher profile, really, yeah. to bring. Yeah. Really Neil good. actually watches this show, so he'll probably be calling. You guys. Exactly. Yeah, he, the number he wants is to get better one. exposure out there. <laughs> <laughs> No, I am. I'm just chuffed. It no, is. Thank just you very great. much. I mean, yeah. it means a lot because, um, you know, there's a lot of good publications out at the moment mm -hmm. in the UK and um, we're just a part of the of the scene, really. 
Um, but uh, where are we, guys? We're four years in now, aren't we? I, I, and I, think this, I think this award means so much more to myself and everyone else as well because the actual voting process is four years further along as well. So there's so many more people voting on it. Yeah. Um, you know, we deliberately always take a, a stance of not trying to promote it too much because we don't want to sort of make out that like we're we're buying votes or anything like that. So we sit back and and it's wonderful that the people have voted for us. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and it just shows the hard work that's gone into it. And I think the comic itself is in a much stronger position now than it was when we first won the award as well. You know, I voted about a hundred times using different emails, so I had to show her. <laughs> But I didn't ask you to do that. You can't no, I didn't do it, easy. folks. I didn't, do that. I, didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> I think it's worth saying as yeah. well. The comic scene has uh, ingrained itself now within the whole comic uh, or the UK comic side. Um, so it's, it's it's probably even more prestigious. Um, and there's a lot more people that are sitting up and having a look at what's going on there. Yeah. Ben, you should actually have comic scene uh, do something about Mark Who's 77. That's fair yeah. enough. We That's have appeared enough. in there. We have appeared. They do an encyclopedia version, and we've actually mm -hmm. featured in parts of that. Oh. So, um, yeah, I speak to Tony Foster. He's a okay. he's a genuinely good guy, and we're fairly, mm -hmm. you know, we we go both ways in terms of providing them with material and stuff. They did a big sh they did a big exhibition. I think it was last year or the year before, and we were there, sent in front of you know, in um, I think it was either Dundee or one of the Scottish. Um, I think it was Dundee. There was had a big exhibition and. Uh, no, he supports, and 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 obviously it's a fairly um, organic kind of you know symbiotic uh, relationship really with uh, crossover artists and writers and and, and such like. And um, yeah, I think it's as Steve was saying and Dave sort of alluded to, it's a different scene as well that's moved on. It was fairly embryonic at the time and COVID. So we, as anyone who who who, who doesn't know too much about the seventy seven, we launched in effect um, launched the comic um, right at the time of the first lockdown. Um, March 2020 but we'd been working on it for six months prior to that mm -hmm. uh, never really obviously envisaging that it was just going to be an online thing um, but we've kind of picked it up and run with that and uh, I think really it's 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 been a precursor for a lot of people that is you weren't able to get out and see people in conventions and we're all other parts of the country you know working yeah. together meet up as and when we can at conventions and work together but as we set up then, we were doing weekly meetings and and, and obviously everyone was, the whole Zoom thing was brand new to people, mm -hmm. wasn't it? You know, only yeah. only certain businesses were doing Teams talks mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Um, so it goes to show how the world's really changed. But the 77 is still there. And we'd like to talk about at some point the fact that number 10 is 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 out and about and um, that's I think where we were going news today so uh, that's we'll exactly that. where we were going ben yeah. that's exactly where was I, I was going um you're calling it a jump on issue why is that issue 10 mm, no nah, steve told me to change it <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> come so what is it now what is it now <laughs> What are we calling it then? What are we calling it? Place to start issue. I think basically my notion was that we were offering as um, a rewards um, back issues at a really incredible rate. That was the yeah. Thing. I think it's worth saying it's a jump on Kickstarter as much as uh, oh. what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to pick up on all the history for a really cheap mm. price on this Kickstarter. Yeah. But to call it a jump on issue was probably you know that's why I kind of advise maybe against it. <laughs> Because if you uh, think about it, V is continuing. So you can't actually start V where you are. I, yeah, I, I totally see that. We're closing off a lot of strips in the next this issue and uh -huh. the next issue. So, mm. but, um, yeah, to call it a jump on would probably be uh, yeah. mis-selling a little bit. So. Yeah, Dave's probably yeah. scratching his going, isn't it actually where Silver Jubilee really uh, ends? That's yeah. not right. <laughs> so, it's, def it's definitely let's... a jump off issue. For <laughs> jump off issue. Jump Something's off. Something's jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pool's cold. Don't you? Okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, Steve, Steve. So I just mentioned V. Um, can you yes. give us a story synopsis so far, and what we are going to look forward to in ten without spoilers, just to get everyone up to date in case they have been bad people and not seen the first. Night. No worries. In number ten, we are back. I was going to say back in present day, but we're back in present day in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if that <laughs> back to the future. Okay. Yeah, and um, we're we're basically. Uh, getting to the culmination of the story now so we're uh -huh. on a little bit of a journey for the finale uh how i describe it is in the next two issues we're gonna enter a world not dissimilar to uh 
the old platform um, computer games, whereby you yeah. know you you, you don't, I'm trying to think which ones. Uh, does anybody have Bruce Lee on their home computer? And you no. you literally go along a level, you kill your box boss at the end of the level, and then you take the next uh-huh. stairs or whatever to the next level. So oh okay, is, I've seen something like that. Yeah, this is kind of where we're going with it, uh, but okay. it's going to unravel a whole lot of myth uh, from mm-hmm. Mesopotamia in the process. And hopefully you have a lot of excitement and a lot of twists and turns. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to let someone ask a question right after I ask one more question. Dave, tell us a little about Silver Jubilee, where it was, where it's going. Yeah, um, basically Silver Jubilee is obviously the story of a young girl who's coming into her powers in um, Britain back in the uh, punk days and then now moving towards a sort of uh, modern day era. Um, she's uncovered a plot and the last issue is going to be just one huge fight. With her wow. against uh, super villains, and uh, we'll see how it ends and whether it'll come back. So the last installment's basically Marvel Mayhem. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. much. Okay. Okay. Um, Vicky, why don't you ask the next question? Well, I want to talk a little bit um, about the Kickstarter and some of the fabulous rewards in addition to getting back issues. Because as you can see behind me, I've got my little corner of uh... rewards that I've gotten. Um, I've got artwork by Joe over here. I've got the Bogeyman poster. Uh, Ian Stopworth did a painting of my husband, uh, behind me. Um, I absolutely love the rewards that you guys do. Um, I have a page of lifeboat, but that one's at work. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just talk about some of the amazing things that you guys, I I just, it, I, I can't comprehend the things that you allow us to get through a Kickstarter. It's not just the comic book, which in and of itself is phenomenal, but then all these other things that you let us get. Yeah. I mean, we pay for it, but we get it. <laughs> I think that's the, you know what, that's, that's the beauty of Kickstarter, I think, mm-hmm. is that, so where we talked about independent comics growing bigger, obviously uh, crowdfunding is a big part of that. And, yeah. well, as more people than ever are uh, accepting that they can go onto platforms like Kickstarter and not only buy a comic that's a wonderful product and equally as good as anything you'll find in the shops, but they can get all these wonderful extras and really connect with artists on that level. Uh, through mm-hmm. the rewards so yeah it's a spectacular thing i remember ian when he was painting that one of your husband with the aliens backdrop uh yeah it blows you away mm-hmm. right like you can't yeah. get that oh god thing, right best birthday gift ever i'm never yeah. going to be able to top it yeah. and I, think, um... I think that's one of the things about the, the actual 77 itself we were probably i would say i think we're pretty pretty confident in saying we were probably the first british indie comic that were re- offering rewards such as this and yeah. it's certainly something that pretty much every uk indie does now but the advantage we've got is because we've been doing it for so many years we've built up a level of trust with the um yeah. customers and um fans of the comic so they know what they're going to get they know that if ian stopford is offering a sketch offering us a sketch it's yes. not just a sketch yeah. No, they, they, yeah. these are virtual commissions, frankly. Yeah. Um, in the same way that Andy Sawyer's, some of the work Andy Sawyer's has done over the years for people yeah. that come out, and it's it, they're not sketches, you know. Yeah. Other yeah, comics we're very do lucky, aren't we? This issue well, particularly, but we we have, we have a certain standard, and I think I think that that stands in good stead in every mm-hmm. Kickstarter going forward. Yeah, I mean, we've it, got, sometimes it... it's hard to choose. It's like, do I want that one or that one or that one? It's like <laughs> on a bank account, bank account. Yeah. Okay. It, hmm. there, there's a really cool incentive. I'll let you talk in a second, Ben. There's a really cool incentive. I wanted to let people know that if you back any of the physical options, you'll be eligible to win a page of Andrew Sawyer's original art from the penult episode oh. of Silver Jubilee and that winner will be pronounced uh, on the day that the Kickstarter ends on Sunday 14th of April. Go ahead Ben, I'm sorry to cut well, you off. It's incredibly generous of Andy and he's very kindly obviously um, put in for a couple of pages, one's gone so there's one left and um, this is additional to that so thank you Andy as well but obviously there's Lou Stringer who does his Sergeant Shouty or his Brickman uh, Combat Colin sketches I've got several myself which I collected mm-hmm. um, we've got Aid Hughes so um, who does the art with Steve for V Aid's in for a handful as well Mike Walters who's doing the rounds now with 77 publications he's had something um, already so hang on a second yes 
something which will be published in just a couple of weeks with blazers coming out um called smile and he did some sketches for that but he's then come on board with us and dave am i right he's also working on a strip am i right in haunted as well yeah yeah um that's mike's artwork behind me there you can see a little bit of which is uh yeah. right. um, trying so to avoid spoilers that's is from the... a strip in blazer four yeah. um which is a continuation of the story that had gone in yeah. of the story that had happened in yeah. blazer three on the do you want to tell him how Tons. mike um mike sort of announced himself on the scene what what, what he went through to to get his first gig with 2000 AD. Yeah, he won the he won the 2000 AD Art Stars competition yeah. a couple of years ago, I think it was. So he's had a few things in 2000 AD now, and he's very much in demand. And he's got a, a strip coming up yeah. in um, this comic is haunted issue four. So, yeah. yeah, I think for 2000 AD is it uh, Lowborn High? Is Lowborn the... High? He's done. He's done a couple of future shocks, I think, as well. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to see, man. if you want to see an interview with Mike, it's episode 13. Just go one episode before this, and you got cool. Mike Walters. So yeah, we got cool. sketch prices, those sort of what we call convention sketches. Uh, some are inking and a, a, from priced mm. about 35 pounds all the way up to I think 70 pounds plus for AIDS. Um, and the artwork, I think we've still got some pages on the extra uh, add-ons. So Ian's got some and has allowed me to put them on for a really cheap price. I think it's eighty-five pounds for a couple of the ones from a previous comic, which we just happen to have in stock. So generous, and a couple of other choice pieces are available. And as Vicky will contest to, I mean, they're about A two, and uh, it's it's collage work and just incredible. I don't know if Steve, yes. you've got you've got you've got a couple, haven't you? I, I believe. Yeah, I've got some of his previous work, and it's just incredible stuff. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, it should be hanging in galleries. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Definitely. I, I actually have it behind uh, museum glass and specially right. framed to to make sure that it will survive the apocalypse. Well, I, so think, <laughs> I think what's also reassuring, Vicky, is that it is it is acrylic. So, yes, but you're right. It's multimedia, so maybe the pencil might, you know. So you do need to be careful with these things. Never hang your yes. artwork in 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 light, for example. No, it's no. not in direct light at all. It's actually behind all the windows. They're mm. all around it. They, there's no direct light at it at all. Yeah. And I've got it behind um, yeah. specialty glass when we had it framed. Is it a rumor, Dave? You're um, associated with the. Uh... The Grey Phantom. Don't, don't, don't you never open your blinds, do you? In, in your house, Is it's right? very rare. I don't do. I don't do sunlight these days. Not now work indoors. In fact, I was expecting to see you. It's with easier certain, to be a vampire when you don't open the blinds. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but so I, Steve uh, and Dave are very um, self-effacing. So Dave didn't mention that actually he curates this comic is haunted and gets an awful yeah. lot of talent in for for those ones. And Steve's projects, special projects namely the annuals and lifeboat and covers of 77 so between the two of them they do an awful lot of heavy lifting and i think also at this point we should mention of course joe bless her who um yeah is just yeah. not well enough to attend tonight she sends everyone her yeah. love um you know and we're we're will we catching up with her well i don't know dave if you're seeing your, your sister before um lawless but we'll Fingers certainly be catching yeah. up in may so yeah. joe joe creates uh pandora pandora presents as well yeah yeah <laughs> in the group as well but just to continue the shout outs because when we're talking about uh, artists that contributed to the kickstarter uh, i just want to shout out to gary burley as well who's contributed oh. sketches mm. and ben mcleod so Absolutely. both wonderful artists and uh, i think you can still get their sketch rewards if you want to jump onto uh, pledge yeah. now so, yeah. yeah we've had Good a really busy day today it's really yeah. jumped and spiked today but there are certainly these high value rewards yeah. but as we mentioned earlier as well is something that we're really aware of is that people, you know, I don't know what it's like in your side of the pond, but you know, times are fairly hard over here. We've got, we've had yeah, rampant yeah, inflation, yeah, job yeah. security has yeah. been an issue. Um, you know, between myself and Dave, we've changed jobs and done things and, you know, you've got to be careful of what, 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 mm -hmm. what you're spending your money on, but we always try to offer real value for money. So for example, anyone watching this who's interested, you can get all 10 um, digital editions for, I think it's 15 pounds. And of course there's no shipping with those oh my um, gosh and it's 30 pounds uk um sterling for the heart the, the the printed copies with i think there's cheaper print uh cheaper postages we could do which i think is six pounds five pounds six pounds something yeah. like that but wow uh, ben how can they get the uh kickstarter okay well it also has to have um potentially just a little caveat of people aren't aware of what kickstarter was it's uh okay. it's, so you go online look for kickstarter and then on the search Barb, just look for the 77 and you will find us there. And that's the image that is our, our sort of placekeeper, really, our, you know, 
place for keeper on the on the, on the Kickstarter. Um, and yeah, an address as well. Thank you very much for that, Mark. And uh, we'll You're also welcome. put this up on the YouTube. And of course, it's worth mentioning that the Kickstarter is running until the 14th of April, 2024. Yes. So if you're watching yeah. this in 2062, you missed it. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, but, and, and that's a disclaimer. We have to put the disclaimer there. <laughs> okay, You will ben, be able this... to get your shares one to 100 by then. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very, I think so. Very reasonable I price, think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I can't wait to get issue 100. We that's won't be talking about that. But... <laughs> no, we're stopping at 77, guys. Didn't I tell you that? Come on. Sounds good to me. Uh, you know, that actually works. <laughs> Um, Do you know what? So I was ever a salesman. It seems like a good point that as this mm -hmm. one's going to go out live and people can sell mm -hmm. back in and then money coming out before payday. Well, no mm -hmm. money, no money comes out of your account even after you pledged until that fourteenth mm -hmm. deadline. Right, it releases at the end there. So if you pledge now, mm -hmm. I think it'll come out before payday at the end of the month. There you go. Yeah, and as well, okay. and as well as that, obviously, if there are people who are struggling up until the, the uh, Kickstarter ends and they might not have the money for those items mm. until afterwards, feel free to get in touch with one of the admins on the 77 comic or anything mm. like that. And we can always furnish something because we do have our own our own online shop, the 77publications.net, mm. I believe it is. So, you know, you can... The 77 comic.net, sorry. Yeah. So you can always pick up stuff for... Oh, good man. From yeah, there. absolutely. Absolutely. We're doing this live. We're doing this live and we're going to move away from uh, issue 10 Ben, do you have anything uh, about Blazer um, that you want to bring up? Absolutely. So going out live, it will be at the printers when this is first viewed on mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, so, yeah, we've had we just one page left while we're speaking. Uh, the fantastic Gary, uh, sorry, Charlie Gillespie is doing an extra page. He's doing, oh. I believe it's seven page strip for Steve McManus's oh, wow. The Collector. Mm -hmm. The first one went out in issue two. It's a second strip. It's anyone knows Charlie's work is just his line work is just incredible. Yeah. Um, really looking forward to that. He gets the double yeah. page spread. Um, Andy Richmond, um, mm -hmm. our partner in crime, is also obviously the art editor on that. And yeah, yeah, I was today going through looking at getting t shirt sizes, telling Steve how many scripts to get printed yeah. off. He's doing, he's done signed scripts for us, copies of Sheer Glam Conspiracy going out. And in fact, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I want to check it out, didn't back the Kickstarter, as Dave said, go to the 77comic.net. You can pre-order uh, issue four of Blazer and you can bundle it with one, two and three at a special price or get all of them on the, on our Kickstarter as well. Because the, the, the great thing about what we do is we have enough comics to be able to share. So here's a screenshot from the shop. Um, but, you know, it's um, it's a back catalogue and we also reprint as well. So, um, you know, if we're moving away from just discussing um, the 77 as such, um, Steve, why don't you tell us what's been reprinted very recently? What has been reprinted? What is it issue one? I thought it was moving away issue from issue one. We haven't discussed it. I know, but we're going to talk about <laughs> issue one for 10 <laughs> seconds. Quick, give us a 10 so seconds. We're moving away from issue 10 Real to quick. issue one. And we're on our fifth printing of issue one. And wow. the lucky buyers of issue one will get um, an episode of Ian Gibson's Lifeboat inserted into issue one. That's how we're reprinting it with a lifeboat cover from the genius that is and was Ian Gibson. Yeah. Um, now, now, Steve, the only thing, because I, I love V and everything, but with the reprinting, uh, it's like color. The whole point of certain scenes were black and white in my mind. Yeah, yeah, no, percent <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. It's um, it, it's quite a difficult decision to make. Mm -hmm. Staying faithful to the comics that I really enjoy, which are black and white, and mm -hmm. that kind of artwork. Commercially, yeah. to be successful, I think, unfortunately, we're in a world now where everybody expects to see their artwork yeah. in their comics in color. Now you'll still get some faithful people, and we did, we did. I have considered, and it's not off the table at the moment, but actually running V as, as a collected edition with a Ooh. black and white version as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be economically yeah. viable, but I will be uh, examining the possibility for sure. Yeah. But I mean, the black and white, the black and white, I mean, it does get colored. There are color scenes, but it, you know, it's another, It's a, there's a reason for it to be color and the first one to be black and white, isn't it? I mean, the, when it, the other dimension or whatever, it's yeah. Like, it's certainly, yeah. I, I think so. That was that was luck and judgment, I guess. So when okay. we switched over to color, we'd already been having probably a couple of episodes at that point mm -hmm. where the feedback was, oh, you know, it might be nice to see this in color. Oh no, 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 I want to see it in black <laughs> and white. 
and then we entered uh the underworld right. in the future mm-hmm. and that's yeah. when we switched to color yeah so there was there was a kind of a horror um interlude that mm-hmm. went color just yeah. before that and then they entered the underworld and it was quite nice it was almost poetic that that then yeah, yeah. Uh, was fresh with color um and looked like you was leaving the black and white yeah. universe and entering the color Not I, think to impor- say... I think it's important to mention as well that um Obviously, with the 77 Publishing Company, we actually do host a variety of comics. So, yeah. whereas the 77 is currently in co- colour, um, oh. Blazer is 99% in black and white right. to sort of um, to mm. show how it was produced mm. back then. Uh, this comic is haunted, will always be roughly 50 50 because with horror, mm-hmm. obviously, there's so many people love the, yeah. the actual black and white stuff as well. And I think with Pandora as well, when that came out, you've had, we had a black and white strip in there as well. Mm-hmm. So there will be something for everyone, although yeah. obviously the 77 is the flagship title, and that's probably the one that's most commercially viable yeah. in terms well, we of... Had like, some, we had some guest um, work, didn't we, Steve, in Annual One? Um, Glenn Fabry, Steve Pugh, yeah, that work was black and white. Them in black and yeah. white in Annual One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Again, so there will always be something feel, for everyone. I feel like when we, well, we did, when we started out, the sort of the mission statement, if there was one, was mm. to uh, capture that nostalgic feel um, from yeah. when we were young. And as Dave said, although we're keeping that within the comics, uh, within the brands that we have, mm-hmm. 77 has recently, from issue seven, I think, we sharpened up uh, the design of it, uh, went full colour and tried to make it a comic that would sit on the shelves of uh, mm-hmm. a news agents rather than just a specialist comic store. I mean, we I discussed make it as fun. well, it sounds a bit meta, but we discussed the fact is we wanted to show the development of a comic in speeded up time as well. In yeah. that it started off looking one thing, and that's because the comic that we, we were all, all loved as kids or comics do own, don't they? Every three or four years, they have yeah. a rebrand or a whatever. So I think it was only natural, and it's definitely sharper now when we've got a brand image which goes across uh, the 77 yeah. cents and the and, logo. And we were, we're all novices to comic yeah. publishing as well. You know, I want to make a disclaimer. So I want to as well. I want to make a disclaimer. Steve, even though it's not in black and white and it's in color now, it's still perfect. It's still beautiful. I, I don't want anyone <laughs> to think that I'm saying it's not good. It is still amazing in color. Thank you very much, Just saying. Mark. Yeah, <laughs> I was questioning my existence for a minute there. I know I had yeah. to get that out. That's why I was almost interrupting everybody. And I sat back. <laughs> um, uh, Vicky, uh, why don't we? Uh, well, actually, Vicky and Ben and everyone else, lawless, because I'm the odd one out here. I'm I know we out. love you, honey. But one of these I things is not like the other. There in May. I think yeah. we can take a cardboard cutout, can't we? Of, of, of we'll take a cardboard right. cutout. We, yeah, I, we'll, I get, uh, yes. we'll get a banner yes. done. I have a cardboard cutout. We have mm. the head with us. <laughs> I know it's going to be great catching up with Vicky. This is just going to be awesome. But oh, going I'm back so a few excited. years, guys, was it 2017 where we all met up for the first time at Lawless at, uh, yeah. Lawgiver Four or as it was, yeah. Lawgiver Four was my first. So we've been chatting for a couple of years at least online about over geeking out over comics and running a comic book group <laughs> on Facebook, and then we met for the real time. Wow! So it's like every time we go back to certain conventions, it is your family grows, and, yeah. and we get yeah. Lawless is incredibly special. We're just looking to see as well. Yeah. So yeah. amazing. Uh, my I, husband's very excited. Um, I'm sure he it, is. Ask him to bring his checkbook. <laughs> yes, and, and buy me some. Oh, no, it's um, my checkbook, honey. Oh, it's your checkbook. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to say, okay, so you guys are the sponsors. The 77 are the sponsors of Lawless. Mm-hmm. It's coming up in May 25th to 26th in Bristol. Mm-hmm. Um, and we covered it a little before, a couple episodes ago in episode 11 with Sue Hadrill. But I wanted to know if there are any updates on the convention. Anything well, that Steve's we got one today and he may not discuss it. Oh, do you know okay. what? I'll put this one. I feel comfortable enough to break this one. Um, oh, oh, Mark who's 77 exclusive. This is, an, this is an exclusive as of today. <laughs> so, um, as you probably know, in the last couple of years, what we do is uh, I produce a comic book stroke program for the mm. convention. Okay, yeah. And are you about to pull one out of the box there, Ben? Yeah, there we go. So, this was last year's Lawless. Uh-huh. Uh, and we, I created myself and uh, Brendan Wright created a character called Lawless. Yeah. Uh, for the convention, uh, who's kind of a superhero based in the UK, and uh, basically the last two strips have been his adventures uh, around that comic uh, convention. Ooh. Ooh. 
a bit of a riff on that one. So we've got some great artists involved. So I approach a lot of the conventional artists. Oh, see, see that's get... what I wanted, Ben. I wanted an autograph. Only copy. one, Mark. I'm sorry, I we'll can't send you, it. We'll get you something like that this year, Mark. Please, something please. Like Thank yeah. you. Uh, so I generally approach most of the uh, artists attending. Uh, I'll write a script and then I'll attribute. I think it's really nice. I saw something, a few versions of this when I was younger, where a story told by various artists with each of them getting a page to storytell. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we do with it. Yeah. So we're it's a, it's a big one this year it's the 10th anniversary of lawless mm -hmm. uh there's a theme rewriting earth which is, was formerly rewriting extinction is the charity uh yeah, we ecological good enough. yeah. exactly yeah. Paul good enough uh because he is good enough he really is, he is yes he is, he is. yeah <laughs> he, he hears that joke all the time it's in it's the not same i bet you've never heard it before i bet you've never heard it before <laughs> and lawless came second in the convention award so to behind oh, oh yes yes I, I noticed that yeah big shout out to the wonderful sue hadrill on that as well yeah. um so i've been approaching artists literally in the last 48 hours to get involved and mm -hmm. they secured so i won't name all the artists that are involved so far but there's a lot of good names big names there mm -hmm. as well um and the one i have doing the cover and has agreed today is none other than liam sharp of DC I... Blitz. Mm -hmm. um, Green Lennon, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, I believe he's working Death's on Spawn, Spawn story at the moment. Hmm. Death's Head 2. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't get a lot bigger than that, does it? So there's your exclusive. <laughs> Mark 77 exclusive. Yes. Yeah, so he's sure. obviously going to be at Lawless as well. I mean, that guest list wow. is just oh. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, Brian Bolland, John Wagner, Mick McMahon, Glenn Fabry. I mean, help me out, guys. Keep mm. adding. Um, Chris Weston. Uh, where's my list here? Let's oh. let me go for it while we're on. Amazing <laughs> list. Yeah. I would go on it. Took He's looking time. for a list. We're filling up this time. It's and we're also going to have. No um, um, well, well, Gala, Gala. Ben, did you see the present here. I got for Sue? Did you see the? I sent you a picture of something I got for Sue when I went to Gallifrey. What? I met Rachel, the director of Tank Girl. Ooh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. So I, I got an autograph of Rachel for expecting her. Ex expect a big squeal from Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it's the least yeah. I could do. <laughs> yeah. so, Steve, you were going to give us a list? Well, I'm going to reel them out for you, right? Uh, okay. It's a huge, well, it's a very small, intimate, huge convention mm -hmm. by the uh, names on the list. Okay. We've got Brian Bolland. John Wagner, Mick McMahon, Robin Smith, Mike Perkins, Keith Burns, Pete Doherty, Connor Boyle, Simon Fraser, Liam Sharp, Matilda McCormack Sharp, By Parr, Dave Taylor, Sally Jane Hurst, John Higgins, Glenn Fabry, Karen Holloway, Dan Cornwall, Nick Percival, Mike, Michael Carroll, David Roach, Stephen Austin, Ben Wiltshire, Boo Cook, Simon Davis, Mike Collins, PJ Holden, Rob Williams, Ian Edgington, Disraeli, Mike Dory, John McRae, Greg Staples, Chris Weston, Jim Campbell, Paul Goodenough, and I'm going to, that's not the list. Oh, where's the rest of the list? I was going to go over the 24, uh, sorry, the 77 people as well. So Steve Steve Manor, Steve Bull, Dave Healy, Joe Healy, Ian Why Scott, am I not there? Ben Why McLeod, am I not going? Um, and Mike Andy Sawyers, AQs. Yeah. I worked a lot Andy of Ridley. overtime to afford yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it works out, I think it works out as number of i could guests because the people who buy the tickets to go we call guests you see and it's not the same yeah. thing but you have your comic guests and then you have the people of the the, the the pundits right right i think the ratio works out at about eight to one so oh. eight ticket buyers to one superstar that's no cool. queues oh. i mean you've got a queue for brian bolland you maybe wait 15 yeah. minutes I bet you don't have to join a VIP queue yeah. yeah. there's no vip yeah. queue there's no cordon over there that you've paid an yeah. extra Huge yeah, we won't talk about what I just did at Gallifrey One. Yeah, they don't um, charge or they okay. Yeah, <laughs> here in the States, it's ridiculous. Yes, it is. We can't, yeah, we can't there's no charge in charging for signatures. Artists, yeah, okay. most sketches are genuinely free, aren't they, guys? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, he, and even wow. even the ones that do so charge, you're telling me I need to bring another suitcase. Uh, Wait, Vicky, can you get me? I don't know if it's a charity or, or just like I'll do what I can, darling. Thank I'll just you. do what Thank I can. You. 
And if he, she can't bend, then you'll ship it. Yeah, sorry, Dave, um, I didn't quite catch that. Well, I'll ship. Sorry, I'll Dave, bring it ahead. back, no, and I'll just, ship it I'm to you from the, from the, Reno. The price of the sketches, it, they're either really cheap or quite often they go to charity or something like that. Right. So it's it's not like going to to one of these big conventions where they charge mm. fifty yeah, pounds. And it's a fundraiser yeah. in essence, isn't it? Because it's for um, rewriting Earth, the charity that Mark Goodenough set up a couple of years back. There's a fat, there's a tab, oh, there's a tom, a tombola. Oh, the tombola, these prizes are just nuts. Artwork, costume stuff. It's just everyone dishes in and hands out Ooh. stuff from their stalls and is so generous. And, you know, there's an auction that Steve and Paul will be organizing on the gala night. I take that that's mm -hmm. going to be just a mental. Last year was yeah. crazy, Steve. We just raised a fortune, didn't we? It was just great stuff. You know? Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful auction. Uh, myself and Paul, good enough hosting, uh, loads of it. Immensely talented comic people contributing um, artwork, uh, scripts, etc., and other pieces to the auction. It's going to be superb. And what are me and you doing, Dave, with our little bow ties on? Hmm? <laughs> well, there'll, there'll be bow a ties award report. ceremony, won't there? There's an award ceremony only because Dave Ooh. did one a, five years ago, six years ago. Well, Dave, it'll be five years ago. The Golden Squirrels was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The Golden Where Squirrels. We, uh, well, we, yeah, we've moved on a little bit. We don't have a graphic of what's been made, but we'll drop it on our Facebook group. Yeah, it yeah. looks. Yeah, amazing. I gotta talk to you guys about this gala thing. Yeah, because my husband hasn't worn a suit since our our um. Our wedding 33 years ago. Well, I'm wearing a printed T-shirt with a tux on it. There so you I go. Believe, I, believe it's gonna... not, I believe it's not exact. I mean, it's a gala night, but I don't think there'll be that many people. You know what? Then we're golden. Actually, so I have I have a secret to tell you guys. The gala is actually my actual anniversary night. Oh, oh, wow. oh wow. Our actual anniversary is the 25th. So that was kind of how I sold the whole thing. It'll be the <laughs> best... 33rd anniversary in the history of the universe. Oh, so that's I'm never so in, the auction, in the auction, he can buy you something wonderful for your anniversary. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> With no um, I don't know. After all the money I spent in, at Gallifrey One, I may not be able to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I need to. I'll move help the show it. Along. I don't care. I need to move the show along a little. I'm going to put I'll up a graphic, and I want you guys to talk about it. So just give me a second. I'm Ooh. putting up a graphic now. Right. Ooh. What is that? Well, what it is, first of all, let's have a shout out to to, to, to to all the guys who've been working on this. We've had Andy Richmond helping out with designs. We've got Brendan Wright working on designs, and, and Steve's been helping as well. And I've been battling every inch of the way to get something that I wanted as a design. But it's in his em it's again this embryo word has been used a couple of times. So go on, Steve. What do you think Lowell's is? Because you're the you're you're someone who's had to be sold the notion as someone who's going to agree and go, yeah, it's a comic that's worth printing. Why are we doing Lowell's? What is there that needs to be said about Lowell's? Well, I believe uh, we're trying to capture those those comics that we started a uh, uh, kind of uh, inroad to comics. So whether it's Beano, etc., blah 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 trying to get uh, the younger audience involved, um, capturing the, the funnies, as it were. Um, and then, yeah, that logo, uh, myself and Brendan come up with, hopefully it captures the the essence of what we're trying to achieve there. So why is it, I mean, it works so well because LOL is is a great expression anyway. Yeah. But can you see it? Can you see what's in there? Flip it upside down. Can you see it? Uh, see what? Where are we going? Oh, upside down? Uh, hold, on. hold on, hold on. I'm right there. Oh, oh, hello. What do you think? Okay, nice okay, job. that's not fair. That's totally not fair. I love it. That's that is perfect. so brilliant. That oh, is so good job. Brilliant. I almost want to break the uh, the uh, the the uh, level of the show to an R and say something about how brilliant it is, but I'm not going to. Oh, wow! I like that. It's that is amazing. I love that that yeah. was genuine and you'd never noticed that or saw that until we pointed it out. So that's until great. you pointed it out, yeah. That is perfect. And I saw this I I saw this artwork, what, last week, the week before, and, and gave my opinion on it, and I didn't notice. I never turned it upside down. I don't know. Um, but well, no, Lou Stringer, that's Lou really Stringer cool. was part of that process as well. I sent a few out to a mm. few people. Lou loved mm. it. He also liked We'd run with him previous. We had a working title. And we discussed mm -hmm. as directors, I think Joe had quite strong opinions on the fact that we used a different name for it. And then she brought it to my attention and our attention that actually when you take it as a, you know, as a, as a um, take it as its definition of the word we chose, there wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily a totally 100% kind of positive about it. 
whereas lols it's just everything it kind of embodies yeah. as a word um so i think it comes from the i think dave you we stood in various conventions isn't it where basically the parents yeah. are walking past and they got a little nipper that is for the, the americans amongst you a small child yeah. um yeah, yeah. and they're looking at us and they're going can i and the kid wants to pick up a you know a copy of 77 with a v head, head being cut off or one of dave's more but you didn't know, you like, all read that thing. when you were five i mean come on we did yeah. a red action Really but I think as Ben said, we Good did a conven- we did a convention that the the audience was probably ninety percent, um, say eight to twelve year olds. Mm-hmm. That was Warsaw, and, wasn't we, it? and we couldn't even give them anything other than no. badges and that. Whereas quite mm. often at a convention, mm. you know, we'll we'll give away copies of comics if we think it's something that further down the line the person might come back to us. Yeah. yeah. But and, and we kept having kids coming up to us and we were going, Oh, I'm really sorry you can't buy these because they're sort of right. Yeah, and that's where we first chatted about comic it. Is haunted. We just looked yeah. at I wouldn't other. sell to a twenty yeah. year old at the time. And it'll get so, them coming <laughs> back as they get older. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that's it. And, and we've got this thing that we'll be able to sell at conventions and, and fingers crossed it um it it strikes a chord with um mm. adults who want to give something to the kids as well to have a look at as well. Like you know, in the way that the um 2000 AD regenes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would oh, say, I mean, grandkids, etc. Right, would we might, agree? Might not have worked quite so well, but this will be a completely brand new product. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. With brand I, new characters. Um, I think we would know, discuss and say that, or describe and say the 77 brand. It's 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 advisory insofar as, yeah, when we grew up, of course, yeah. I was reading at nine years old, action and, you know, other Hook kind of... Jaw. I read some Tales the from the Crypt roll. when I was yeah. probably... Yeah. Um... But these <laughs> days, I mean, it's just the fact is that I think parents would want to know. Yes, some assurance yeah. I don't think yeah. my mother would have approved you know? what I read yeah. when I was a kid. I, I, I certainly think our products are like aimed at the teen plus market. Yeah, six, yeah. 12 in plus. In terms of this, yeah. today's society, I mean, sure, kids could, younger than that could read it and I wouldn't... Yeah, be I mean, we don't have no, any standout sex or anything. These days. As yeah. much as we all grew up and watched stuff and read stuff that we probably shouldn't have mm. at that age, we also, <laughs> we also watched cartoons and we read the Beano. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you mind if I uh, talk about some of the con- contributors of this. Um, mm-hmm. Lou Stringer is doing something. You know him from the Beano, Sonic the Comic. And uh, in the oh, 77, right. Sergeant Shouty. You know, he's celebrating 40 years in the business this year. Did not know that. Wow. Wow. And, you know, yeah. I have Big to mention Doctor because does, of the yeah. logo. Yeah, he yeah. was with Viz, Doctor min- Who, Marvel UK, mm-hmm. as you said. Yeah. You know, astonishing. The Daft Dimension in every uh, letter column. Daft Dimension every letter column of Doctor Who magazine. Um, who else? We have Grant Perkins, uh, who was a writer and artist of a Doctor Who Adventures comic, <laughs> Doctor Who again, uh, The Adventures of Strax and the Time Shark. He also works for companies like 2000 AD. And, and then there's uh, Matilda McCormick, who has done the artwork for Image Comics, Starhenge, Book One, The Dragon and the Boar, as well as we talked about Paul Goodenough. He, she did uh, something for Paul Goodenough's book, the most important comic book on Earth, Stories to Save the World. And it, it's just yep. amazing. Would this be uh, other, Kev, other Kev Sutherland? Yeah. Kev yeah. Sutherland. Yeah. I have to we, mention. We I have to mention Kev. him again because yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kev's, he, um, yeah, Kev's Beano, he's been educational comics as well. So he mm. does a whole series on Shakespeare, which are kind of like essential reading for, for youth reading uh, for, yes. for yeah. purposes and stuff. He wrote um, for the Red Dwarfs magazine. Yes. Ooh. Or actually arted, did the art. Sorry. He yeah. drew, uh, anyway, okay, live. We're not cutting it out. <laughs> He's also a but very, no, very I mean, funny have... guy. And, uh, yeah, worth, I'm worth sure he is. 20 minutes of it at any time. Yeah, we, Maybe we should have him on the show, Ben. You remember, he was. Yeah, incredible. He me fun. out just watching him yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> so energetic. You know? yeah. Ben, maybe we should have him on the show. In fact, any of the any of the people doing this, uh, lols should come on the show. That's a very good point. So, yeah, I think, I think if so. you count them up, there is at least twelve, and we've got creators from the mm. seventy-seven comics, regular comics yeah. as well. But the the remit is basically it's at least one page, obviously two pages mm. if possible. Some, I mean, right. we've got also got um, so we've got Nigel Parkinson, who's just one of the biggest artists for the Beano. Laura Howells mm. from the Beano. Um, so we brought in a whole load of uh, people who hopefully 
parents will have, well, they will, they will, they will, they will trust if we, when we go through the publishing sort of details and, and such mm-hmm. like. Right. And, it's going yeah. to be more of a, as Steve was saying, it's more of a sort of old school comic. It's not going to be eight pages, 10 pages of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a couple of pages, yeah. you know, quite condensed sort of artwork and, and such like. Very cool. And that's going uh, to be launching before yours, Dave. So yeah, this yeah. comic is haunted is September to be released at the end of October, obviously for Halloween. And yeah. then we've got, um, yeah. So after this, after this current 77 will be lows. So yeah, really, mm-hmm. really excited about oh, it. Oh, wow. Um, speaking of being excited, Diamond Comic, Diamond Publications, or distri- sorry, me, Diamond Distributors. Ben, what's going on with Diamond? Ooh. Well, Steve's book, it's, it's Lifeboat, first of all. Uh, yeah. Fine, thank you. We're, we're, we needed a comic. We needed to push into America. Yeah. So we had conversations. Um, at the moment, American American market isn't a lover of anthologies so much mm. in terms of like real big commerciality. So we, we've been um, waiting for the right book to start the launch and the right mm. book in our opinion would be lifeboat. Yeah. Um, it's done very well over here. The market in America will be familiar with the artist, you know, he's worked on mm. DC titles as well as everything else. Yeah. Um, and with an opportunity and a meeting with diamond and now we are all systems go. We'll be slightly, wow. well, only slightly repackaging the book. And mm. getting it into when's it going to the catalog, Ben? May I think it's the twentieth of May. We're having a special yeah. launch evening for it, so that'll be there. Um, and the way Diamond work is, obviously, it goes out to distribution to the the shop, the retailers. They get their mm. orders in, so we'll be pushing, yeah. obviously, for people to go go and order it um, all the way across the states and the UK, yeah. so UK as well and Europe. Wow. And and that's amazing because if it's listed in May, it doesn't come out to what June or July, uh, or correct, somewhere yeah, around then. Yeah, yeah. If you go to Palm Con South in South Florida in Palm Beach County next weekend on April sixth, you can buy some from me and not have to wait. <laughs> Just say absolutely, absolutely, Ching. Okay, yeah. And yours, yours, uh, Mark, are the first print, first edition. Yes, first yes. Edition. yeah. You know, so rare you, things in the only, only a few hundred were printed. Mm-hmm. All went out with Ian's blessing. He was mm-hmm. involved pretty heavily in 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 ensuring that Steve and Brendan did a great job on that book. Mm-hmm. And I don't oh, think God, that yes. three people ever lavished and Annie Parkhouse apologies. I don't think four people ever lavished as much attention mm-hmm. on a book as I do. If, you, if oh. you know Ian or knew Ian, you'd know his attention to detail. You can see it in his artwork. Yeah. And he doesn't let anything go unless he's happy. Yeah. Um, so we had lots and lots of conversations yeah. during the making of that book. And what was released was something he was 100% happy with, um, which is is really just a nice thing. And that just a lovely little uh, item of remembrance, I think, for, for Ian. Yeah. Well. yeah. So what I think I, and it is just so simply beautiful. It, it's not just a good comic which it is that yeah it is beautiful mm. the everything about it is just so i just I, it, it's like such an elevation mm. and and i love so many styles of artwork i mean obviously and then you guys can't even see i've got a whole nother wall over there <laughs> <laughs> and i've just, seen it through the computer yeah, you see it. <laughs> um and it just the the artwork and everything about it is just so absolutely gorgeous yeah i mean when it's not just a page good is it vicky yeah and steve said this as well you can go into a panel and you can revisit that panel and you can just stare at it for a while and just reread it yes i mean you you know it's it's kind of the way that you would you would look at one of the masters where you're sitting there and you're staring at it and there's so many little things and you know every good piece of art you get that with where you stare at it and you see something new every time you look at it but whether you're looking up close or you're looking from a distance that book is just gorgeous people walk into my office all the time just going (laughs) what is that and they see the big um one sheet yeah and it just and it's my prize and joy I honestly would say say if you went through that book and you took so if anybody hadn't seen that book before and you took any panel on any page and blew it up yeah. to a, you know an A2 size, uh-huh. I think yeah. everybody would just expect that that's a splash page or a poster. 
it's, yeah. it's like yeah. that. Yeah, he yeah. had no constraints but, of editors yeah. leaning over his shoulder saying this has to be done by this 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 by ne- Friday. You know, it was his own labour of yes. love. His best project, yeah. 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 You could really see it. Yeah. yeah. I have a real stupid question for Ben. Really stupid because I already know the answer. So really stupid. Uh is getting lifeboat uh in diamond uh publication uh, sorry diamond distributors keep messing up diamond distributors uh book catalog is this a one shot or is there more to come with diamond well the conversation that we had with with carl brown at diamond was that the book one is done mm-hmm. and book two is all but signed mm-hmm. sealed waiting to be delivered but right. we still wouldn't discuss necessarily the artist. But what we can say, mm-hmm. and Steve will agree with me, hopefully, is that Ian vet- vetted vetted the artist, saying that this person is is up to the job of translating some of his work. Some of it's done. I, I don't mm-hmm. know how many pages, Steve. If you want to go into the detail of what's available well, at the moment and such like. Well, there, there's there's some pages that are finished, part finished, and pencils, and then there'll be a new artist continuing the story again as ben suggested it was that ice was discussed with ian um at a good time um a, a good a good part of his life um not in the final final moments or anything mm. um and agreement was made there so i feel like you know it's it's again something we can bring out with full mm. full blessing from ian um and his family um mm. and release it to the public to continue this story and it'll always be mm. ian gibson's life yeah, because yeah. his story his art will appear until it doesn't appear yeah um, but it's still his story ben i like that answer but that actually wasn't what i meant <laughs> as a question is there going to be more things more comics on uh diamond so the united yeah. states can get this stuff that's right. what i was okay asking. so yeah I mean, this the other comes explanation down, this was comes great, down but... to, to Dave and to and to and to Steve and to Joe off their backs. I'm mm-hmm. basically an editor of one comic and help publish. Okay. I haven't written apart from a stupid company little skateworm stories. I haven't written yeah. much in the, in the in the comics. But Dave has written, and there are two major stories that Dave's written. And Steve's written one major story, and Joe's writing one major story, and we have others that we have been offered which have been started. So, for example, Joe's not here. She can't necessarily talk about um, Pandora Presents, but mm-hmm. Penny Pentagram will be coming back. Penny Pentagram is going to have Ooh. a longer run. Yeah. Not necessarily as an anthological story in parts. Potentially the same is very true of um, Star Nav, which was started, uh, was sorry, scripted by, written by um, Alan Hebden and mm-hmm. very, very beautifully illustrated by Anna Moritzova. There's every chance that that will continue with another artist who's agreed will do the story. Mm. So we've got that written already. And then Dave and Steve really should discuss potentially what's going to happen with their books as well. So, okay. Guys, go ahead. Um, well, in, terms of, this comic, in terms of this comic is haunted. Um, one of the biggest, not complaints, but biggest wishes of uh, the, the readers was that the, the, the really wanted sort of more meaty strips, longer mm-hmm. pages, um, so we we made an editorial decision, and I was really happy with it, that we were going to, instead of producing two issues a year, I'm going to produce one issue, but it'll be the same size as two issues. Uh-huh. So it's oh. going to, oh. we're hoping to bring out at least 64 page, uh, mm. perfect bound uh, issue of this oh. comic is haunted. Excellent. Uh, out of time for uh, Halloween. I think that might be the first time I've announced that. Uh, and it's it's got some special things about it just to make it so that it's not just one issue it is going to be a flip book it's going to have two covers so you yeah. will be able to turn it over and uh andy richmond our incredible art editor <gasps> is going to have a strip oh, in the yeah. middle written by dave thomas that's going to bind the two halves together oh wow so you'll be able Whoa. to flip and so on and it won't uh, matter which nice. way you read it it won't matter yeah. which way you read it it either yeah. way you're reading and it works well, it's going to be good yeah it's it's going to be loaded with stories either way, so yeah. they're all going to be complete in one side. So you're not going to be. Okay. And cool. uh, I'm lining up the artists. I'm waiting for confirmation on it. But the artist that I want for the main cover is absolutely fantastic. Excellent. So, fingers crossed. Uh, if she's able to do it, that will be incredible. Mm-hmm. And then going forward from that, we're going to have to then look at repackaging issues one, two, and three. 
to the same mm. kind of format. Oh. So then if that oh. works well, they could then be possibly moved on to Diamond as well because a horror comics sell really well in the yeah. States. Yes. And obviously, with it being a sort of a 64, 68-page item, mm-hmm. you then got something more substantial and it'll be sort of sold along the graphic novels as yeah. well as like magazines. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's that, that's the plan for Haunted anyway. Hopefully that'll come off. And obviously, okay. um, with uh, Division 77, it'd be wonderful to collect that and yes, get that would. forward to Diamond as well. So we'd have to do a bit of rejigging, I think, with some of like, the store, the the panels, perhaps, like uh-huh. you know, to sort of make more, more clearer going along uh-huh. so that it's not so episodic. But, yeah, that's some, that's something I'd like to see. So that yeah. then we could look towards bringing back uh, Division 77 uh-huh. for the second arc of the storyline. Steve, are we looking? So, yeah, and that, that that's it. Okay, Steve, are we and looking Steve? forward to a V comic? We might be, Mark. We might, yes. Uh, so currently there is, uh, once we get issue 10 of 77 mm-hmm. uh, to print, there'll be 12 more pages of art from the amazing Aid Hughes uh, to finish this book and story. There'll also be a standalone comic from uh, Ian Stockforth with another mm-hmm. offshoot of the V story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll be repackaging this and remastering the towel with some. It's like it's one of these things as you go along. It's an opportunity to to go back and maybe tweak some dialogue here, yeah. change a little panel here. Um, so we'll be able to present something, which I hope is quite incredible. I certainly think so. If nobody else, if, even if I'm mm. the only one. We'll no, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan, Steve. Will you be putting the annual stuff in as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. I want to know. Why not? Yeah, 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 I will definitely. Right, brilliant. Definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna package as much as possible. Uh do you want another exclusive? Yeah. I don't think we've released this one so far, but mm-hmm. I have the pencils and there'll be some painting going oh. on this week to the variant cover for the uh for the V collected edition mm-hmm. and uh little drum roll. <laughs> okay. The artist would be Simon Bisley. Oh, oh wow, okay so Yep, wow. I spoke to, him. I spoke to him literally yesterday as well, and uh, the paint, uh, the deadline for paint is on Wednesday, so that's oh. the date. So I will be uh, heavily hanging out to see what that looks like. But the pencils are incredible. Um, I'm not going to show you that. I, I was very tempted to show you that. We'll <laughs> no, 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 wait on it. We'll, we'll be, we'll okay. be okay. anticipate it. We'll anticipate it. it. Yeah, here it is on the screen. No, there and that's go. not. That's so, not yeah, I'm very <laughs> think so. Uh, if Joe had been here, she probably would discuss um, Red by Night, Black by Day. Um, that's mm-hmm. going to be collected as well. And we probably will be hearing from some fellow contributors at some point when word starts getting out about the sales in the States, mm-hmm. people saying, hey, you know what we did? Can we continue? Mm-hmm. Could we have that collected, et cetera? So and on Red people by need Night, to see Black it work, don't they? They need to have some proof first, yeah. Yeah. So Red by Night, Black by Day, that um, if you saw... We saw a partial cover to issue ten earlier, mm. so that is the uh, that is the cover for issue ten is from Red by Night, Black by Day. That's um, these guys. But yeah. Rupert, yes, yes, it's incredible. <laughs> that is it's so it's such a fascinating um, strip to read through, and to see the artwork is just presented in a way that I haven't seen many comics like it. To be fair, and I really, really, really love it. Mm. So to see that package stuff and a longer form. Yeah, I'm going to be fascinating to have that reading experience, just like any of our, you know, buyers, of what it's like to see and have it in one go, in one hit, you know, 60 pages or something like that. I think every one of our strips would be around about 60 pages or even more. Um, So, Steve, yeah, yours, you say 10 parts, but there'll be 12 on top. You have the annual strips. You could run probably to 80 pages, would you say? You're going to be pushing a lot of additional work. I'm always very careful with any of the artists to just say, look, save that sketch, mm. save that here. Because the characters, once we're designing them, they change a lot. And right. I just think from from a pure fan of comics point of view, I just love that stuff. When you pick up a Watchmen edition and you see the original you know, scratchings yeah. on the back of a yeah. napkin or whatever, all of that stuff is just fascinating. Yeah. So, and it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's also, I think, you know, the fact is none of this would have come about if it wasn't for the support and the generosity of the creators, absolutely. But those backers who have put their hands in their pockets and 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 you know put a lot of yeah. a lot of trust in what we've done over the last four years. And um, you know, I think we've got such a sound platform now. Um 
you know, we've got some choices to make about which order we do things, but we've got a wealth of of, of, of talented people and material to, to to work on. So it's really exciting times. Yeah. I mean, we're actually, in a, we're actually in a fortunate position with how many titles we actually have now, where you're always going to have something around about either just coming out or just mm. on sale as well throughout the year. Neat. I don't know if you guys saw, I mean, I know Steve and, 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 and Dave did. I took a picture just around the corner here in my room uh, earlier in the year on my dining table of all last year's titles. Oh, okay. And I, I literally I had I saw, to push it. them all together to get everything mm -hmm. onto a table. And that, <laughs> and that was including, obviously, guest publications. We did Warfighter for Lawrence uh, Allison, who's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Robin Smith and uh, John Wagner and Alan Grant's uh, Bogeyman, the Incomplete mm -hmm. Case Files. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then there was the lawless thing that Steve done. And then there was the annual right. edition of 77. And this comic has haunted had two comics out last week and yeah. sorry, last year and some reprints. And it's just phenomenal. And um, that is a nice feeling. That, yeah. Well, with a team of people, you can accomplish so much more than, yeah. you know, with the sum of our parts, really. Tell you what, as yeah. well, because we're still small enough. So one of, one of the things I noticed, and I thought it was just me to start with, is that, you know, I didn't really read horror comics as a, a kid. And then I got to read horror comics because Dave was mm. one and realised that actually I really enjoyed them. Um, <laughs> and then when, you know, when uh, Pandora came out from Joe, I read it. I was like, that's incredible. It was like, had me thinking yeah. about these stories. Mm. And then I've seen that now transfer to the audience because people were coming to our stalls at shows going, yeah, I've got all that. I've got all your 77. What else have you done? It's like, yeah. well, have you tried this? And it's like... No, I wouldn't usually just give it a go and then yeah. we're actually converting yeah. people to the different genres as well within our publication, yes. which is yeah, I think I think that's a fascinating offshoot. I didn't expect yeah. Um Ben, do we have a schedule for this year? Yeah, in yeah I don't stop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have my holiday. I have my holiday to. Um, yeah, when, when are you going? When are you going to uh, up in Scotland again? Uh, you know, Skegness, yeah, that's right. Skegness, I go in yeah. January. Yeah, Always that's why I take January. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, so what have we done? We've done Blazer. This Blazer so far. The seventy-seven. Mm -hmm. Lowell's is coming out. We've got mm -hmm. um, a guest publication that we'll talk about with someone. We bring them on the show. It'll okay. be kept back as a surprise for everybody. We're just not quite oh, ready. Oh, I'm not going to say it. I think I know. I'm shutting up right now. Yeah, someone who's got quite a big standing in British comics and has got quite a big opinion of things as well, which I'll leave that there. Oh, um, yeah. Obviously, Dave's uh, omnibus edition or end of year or book or whatever. Are we calling it an annual, Dave? I mean, it's almost no, an annual. I'm not right? calling it annual. I'm no. definitely not calling it annual. Right? <laughs> what, I'm gonna do, what I want to do, I want to have each edition almost like a horror film on its own. So issue four oh. will be told, uh, this comic is haunted, has risen from the grave. And I'll like harken back each year. We'll come out with a, a riff on a famous horror title, I think. I love it because nice. then you can bring out the uh, director's cut and stuff, right? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I still keep getting asked to do this comic is haunted triple X edition. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's yeah. a lot of work and it's going to be in the yeah, bag. You, know, you wouldn't be able to sell that. Your, 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 no, PalmCon has a rule because it's a family event, so you can't have. Adult yeah, but some of our stuff. creators keep asking about: Are we going to do the shiny? Oh, you totally should. They, they have Marvel more and more DC more have, by the creators. Marvel and DC had. Yeah, we're kind of like issues. whatever, but yeah. they want. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, well, who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah. no, I mean, twenty-four for us is obviously about. Proving ourselves and making sure we make right yeah. business decisions and getting yeah. the right product out to to mm -hmm. to, to um, Diamond because you know we brought out a very and I didn't mention Shift mm -hmm. last year um, you know we worked with Adrian down at um, Shift Presents um, and that was for us a massive learning opportunity in terms of how you kind of play with the big boys when you're getting work out to national distribution um, we brought out a great comic it was well received. Um, we're going to be taking all of that experience and pushing it forward with regards to now, um, you know, just a different sort of network of distribution, especially in the States, uh, as people say, and would understand the market there is just much. And much I, I, th I think yeah. I'll speak for us, yeah. all of us here. When we first started doing this, we, we were there going, well, where, what would our long-term game uh, goals be? Mm -hmm. and, it was, and it was always about, oh, let's get in W.A. Smith. Let's get in W.A. Smith, which is the biggest, yeah. well, pretty much the only sort of chain news agents where you can get, 
and now we hardly mention that. And now it's like we've got to push for diamond. We've got to, you know, yeah. and, it, and it's great. It, yeah. and, it, and it's incredible that literally it was the holy WH, getting in WH Swiss distribution was the holy grail for us. It, it has to be done. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, yeah, we did that. Let's move on. Let's get yeah. it. And it, it's yeah. really, it, it's incredible. I mean, the last world year as well, is your it. oyster. I mean, Dave, last year, um, I think actually of us, of us guys, I think you were the only one, bless your heart, you weren't attending at the London Film Comic Con. Yeah. So it was your sister and Steve. So Steve would discuss it, but it was a monster, wasn't it? It was huge. It was one of the big, big shows. But we also do Thought Bubble and we have no trepidation now. You have to be curated to get into Thought Bubble. And I'm not saying that we're in any way blasé about it. I go through the process we speak together about how we're going to put the wording together for what we're doing how we're going to talk about the application to get to thought bubble but ever since we've been there we're back every year and that is an mm -hmm. achievement in itself i mean is it 400 um 400 places to fill and they get thousands of people applying to go there and there's a lot of reasonably big, big names who can't get in and it's a real shame and you wonder and you look at the names who sometimes don't get a table and you're like wow it's like yeah. how did i get in and they didn't yeah, I think I think. And thank you, I got yeah. in. <laughs> I think I think when we were setting out, it was you know there was there was many early conversations about oh we could do this or we could put that out or and it was a lot of not nothing but a lot of not a lot. So what I mean by that is we made a decision back then that we were going to do this as professionally as perfectly. Um, yeah. And with the highest quality that we possibly could, even coming down to like, you know, the paper stock mm. that we choose, the cover, um, the artist uh, that we're involved with. And there's been a natural just raising of that. I think when we look at our back issues, generally we'll look at them and everything is a step above the one before every yeah. single time. So, um and again, like Dave says there about, you know, we, we were reaching. If you told us at the beginning we're going to be in WH Smith, we'd gone, wow, look at that. <laughs> and now, as Dave said, we, we're not talking about that. We're talking about breaking America, right? We want to be the Beatles of comics, yeah? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I went into the comic shop where I shopped in Birmingham, literally mm -hmm. from the age of about 10 up until in my late 30s. And I used to go in there every single week. And I went in there with mm -hmm. my daughter and they've got a copy of Blazer with my strip in it. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. This is quite cool. That's like hearing your song on the it. radio. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's little steps, and I think I think the fact that the the, the four of us um, include like the three here, including Joe, um, mm -hmm. bouncing ideas off us all the time, and we've got two great art editors who we can bounce yeah. ideas yeah. off, makes such a difference because yeah. I, th I think one of the one of not a, not a failing, but one of the limitations in a lot of the British indie comics is it sort of tends to be a one person operation, so. Mm. And it's great having it's great having a talented editor, but a talented editor can still miss stuff. Whereas Ben's yeah. fantastic at doing the seventy seven, but he'll accept advice off ourselves, yeah. especially Steve. Myself, I'm always open to advice because I I'm still new to this. And Steve, I know is the same, and Joe as well. So when you've got four people working towards the same goal, it makes such a difference. Um, but I, I think, I think also that's that, that is Steve. absolutely right. But everyone is also given autonomy to actually make decisions to present as notions about what they want to do it's not like we're saying oh we oh, design yeah. everything by committee it's not quite that is it you know you you came up with no not at, not at all not at all i mean in yeah. terms of haunted i'll 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 bounce ideas off i'll say is everyone happy with this but ultimately it's, it's my comic in the mm -hmm. same way that the annuals steves and lifeboat steves i wouldn't step on steve's toes unless yeah. it's something major and I, i'd <sighs> like to think if it was something major with my own stuff that i produced mm -hmm that they'd step in then. But yeah, we, we work together and we all focus towards the same goal, which isn't, to, it's fun to dominate the world, but yeah. it's to just produce good quality comics. Yeah. You know, and to keep, yeah. keep people coming back, you know, I mean, that's that's the key thing. It's about it's about the customer. It's about the person, who, the fan. I mean, I don't like saying fan because it's a bit embarrassing, but yeah. it's about the, the reader and they're, they're the most important person. And, mm -hmm. and as long as they're buying the comics, we can then produce the comics that we want to produce and pay and pay a decent rate and a fair rate. And it is nice also, isn't it, guys, that we are not moving away from our funding, which has always been that crowd funding through Kickstarter, but we can now take up other options because we'll get orders through Diamond and we then have X amount of weeks to make sure that we can afford to do the publication and the printing. Mm -hmm. But we also know that income is guaranteed. Diamond will yeah. pay 30 days after the, you know, the, the, the close of the mm -hmm. catalogue. Excellent. 
So, you know, it's a different it's a different thing. But I don't think we'll ever stop doing Kickstarters as such because we love that whole notion. We started the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also the people on Kickstarter or the other crowdfunding platforms, it's very tribal. And um, just a shout out to yeah. all the other in, independent comic people. So, you know, we're it's a really hard job to produce your comic, to do all the social media around it, promote it, get it on Kickstarter, do a successful campaign on Kickstarter have an audience, grow an audience. It's yeah. it's actually too much for one person. So mm-hmm. anybody that's getting anywhere near being successful in independent comics is doing a really good job. Yeah, that's, and, that's why I'm really impressed with like what Shane and Shane's doing over at Scratch Comics with Lawrence, Lawrence and Hedrick. I mean, you know, the two guys, it's just, you know, that's, that's a yeah. lot of work and it, it's, it's, it's yeah. showing fruit to them as well. Yeah, so and is that why we're here? So Steve Tan has moved on from doing those. He's with Quantum Comics. I mean, that is a phenomenal thing. We're issue six now, yeah. I believe, they're, they're going yeah, with. Doing fantastic. Um, you know, it's I want to. We we bring them like they bring us along. We bring them along. Yeah. If independent comics are being successful, if somebody buys one of their products, yeah. there's more chance of them buying one of our products later yeah. on. In the same, I, same way as when we were kids and we picked up Marvel, maybe hadn't read DC yet. Yeah. There was just as much chance we might switch over and start buying yeah. DC comics at some point. I've been yeah. wanting to. I've been wanting to read Quantum Comics, but they don't have a digital copy. And they're I, not okay. Maybe I'll well, make Steve then. Yeah, because yeah. I would buy. I totally. I would buy Quantum. It looks like a really good book. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Guys, we're coming towards the end. We've been on uh, for quite a while. Um. I want to do some housekeeping. Uh. Would uh. Ben, would you like to do your housekeeping? Sure. So as has been mentioned earlier, the seventy seven comic dot net is where you can get our back catalog. The seventy seven look on Kickstarter. Thank you very much, Seventy Seven Comic there. And basically, put Seventy Seven into Facebook, and you'll find us there. That's where we have our our, our groups. Dave's got um, a haunted group. There's uh, an imagination of Ian Gibson group. Got Pandora group. Got Blazer with Steve McManus group. Um, all comes under the um, Seventy Seven Publications. And um, yeah, it's uh, and also wanted to mention that as well. So we're doing Lawless. Mention that a big time. Doing Liverpool on the twenty fourth of April. I'll be there with Ian Stopforth. And I'm going over with um, meeting um, one of our 77 representatives, Morgan, um, over in Enniskillen uh, the first week of June. Been trying to get there for many years. And uh, Paul Trimble has done a job on me this time, made sure when he spoke to me at a convention last year that I wasn't able to leave his presence without saying I was definitely going. So I will be over. Mm. And Vicky, are you going to meet me in Enniskillen the week after? <laughs> Well, actually, I'm I'm going to Ireland the week after to go uh, drink with I'll my buddies. I'll see you buddies. there, then. I'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going uh, to a little village outside of Belfast, so. Okay, well, if you're hiring a car, come over. It's, oh, it's not far, it's not, not far, then. It's in Northern Ireland, so. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me do a Tell little bit of my house. Tell me where to go, hon. <laughs> yeah, let me do a little, little bit of my housekeeping. Um, we, uh, Vicky and I, do a show called the Mark Who 42's Universe Podcast, it's available on most pod- podcast platforms and at markwho42.com. We talk about science fiction. Hey, we talk Doctor Who. We've actually going to be reviewing the uh, new episodes uh, probably the day after and posting them the day after that. So this Monday after the Saturday it's on, we'll be having our show out for you to watch. Um, and we've taken a break. We've actually taken a break. We haven't done a new show in a bit. So right now what I am pushing and want you to do is go to YouTube and go to youtube.com at Marku42 or search for Marku 42s Universe, and you will find classic interviews that we've done with Doctor Who, Star Trek, Babylon 5, all sorts of guests. Uh, we did interviews. It has, well, it has the news from back then as well, but the interviews are really great. From this show, we got to do conventions around the United States. It was really, really fun. So if you want to listen to a great classic interview, go to the playlists at youtube.com at marku42 all right uh i wanted to do final uh final comments uh steve anything you want to say to our listen viewers excuse me viewers just uh enjoy the comics enjoy all comics but come and come mm. and check out ours um if you've never tried us before or get in touch with us on our socials and we'll send you a digital comic to get you started then we'll handle that for you and hopefully you'll love that and come back for more yeah Dave? Yeah, I, I think I say it every time I'm on here, but just thanks to all the readers. Um, you're the reason we do this, and 
Yeah. While you keep re while you keep buying the products, I'll keep writing them. And uh, yeah, just a huge thank you. And if anyone ever wants to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook as Dave Ely. Drop me a drop me a line, and we can talk about anything. Okay, right. thanks, Vicky. Any final comments or questions or anything? Well, I just wanted to ask um, our guys: Do you feel that you, you know, with the time that's gone on over the last four years, you kind of feel like you're um, living in a dream world? Steve, Dave, Ben, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, little little, little bit of a dream world here. <laughs> I'd say that it's, it's it's kind of moments like this where you can kind of step back and actually consider what you've achieved because it's all pretty full on, and there's always something to do. There's always a message waiting on Messenger or an email waiting to be answered, or somebody uh, wanting to find out where their order is, or um, and it's just you know when we're talking there, we're again. I think when Dave said you know. A dream, as it were, was to have a comic in the local shop. Yeah. And we achieved it, and we're not thinking about it. I think me and Ben have talked about this before. We'll launch a comic, and we'll be so proud of that comic. And then the day after we've sent it out, we don't talk about it anymore. We're just moving straight on to the very next thing. So it's just yeah. good. Take a step back, breathe, and actually uh, yeah. appreciate what we've done. I'm really, really proud of what we've done together as a group. It's been amazing, and that includes all the artists, what we call the 77 family, everybody who's worked yeah. with us and those that continue to work with us and people like yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, it's such a shame you won't join us this year at Lawless. I know. Catch um, maybe next year. Maybe next so year. So they'll always maybe be next year. And, and maybe we're going to keep year. working with Sue Hadron on Lawless. <laughs> we'll keep turning up to the best conventions in the country. We're going to see, yeah. as Ava said, going to keep putting those books out if people want them. And we're just so pleased, I think, that um, you know, you can have an opportunity. Anyone watching this in the States now hearing of this about 77 will be able to go yeah. to your local shop and buy it. We've had representation sure. before. Dave, in fact, is one of the guys who's already been published in the States via um, Antarctic Press. So, yes, yeah, that's the, yeah. the Gun Brothers. Um, but, you know, that was a taster, really. That was an opportunity. But I bet, Dave, I bet you don't even think about that now, do you? You've been published in no, the States. You just it's... reminded me, actually. It's really... we go. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, like, but it's like Steve said. Not and ben say, you're, you're that full on with everything. You kind of, It is when you step back and do something like this and you go, oh, yeah, OK. Or when you or when you go for a drink with a mate and he goes, oh, I can't believe you've done this, that and the other. And you're there going, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, OK. Yeah, that was nice. I know. Yeah, We're going to be having a it's... chat. We're going to have as a guest of ours, our guest. And I'm the I'm working as an editor of Steve McManus, who, for me, is the reason that I do any of this. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got a stripping blazer and to have steve edit me because mm. he's my editor and and he's a harsh editor and he'll admit it <laughs> and it, he will tell me exactly what mm. i'm doing wrong and it's wonderful yeah. and to have that conversation oh, with your legends yeah. it's just amazing i'm actually somehow in issue four i'm not quite sure yes, what's going are. on I but can't i'm in much. there and i would like my postal order now really I don't <laughs> know. Have postal order. it will be posted to you yes. thank you thank you um so yeah we're we're out of time um i want to say uh, on behalf of myself mark baumgarten ben Collis, jacob Vac <laughs> see that told yeah, you slide uh -huh. Vicky jacobowski and our guest steve bull and dave healy we want to say uh thanks for watching and we'll be back with another show soon and it will be not it'll be edited and it'll have bells and whistles it won't be like this though this was good this was not bad i like this but i want to do bells and whistles for now on um and finally i want to say that the 77 publications is going to be going strong in 2024 and yeah. mark who's 77 will cover it all until next time guys we will be we're gonna see you next time bye everyone bye, bye everyone